Good morning. Today it is Tuesday, October the 18th, and the year is 2022. It's a beautiful, hey, good morning. Beautiful Tuesday morning. Good morning. I just gave you your breakfast. I just got to put it, I just literally put a big old bowl of dog food and water out. Toys over there for him to play with. Gave him all that food and water. He was over there eating and drinking water and just having a good old time. What happened? You heard me over there talking and said, I don't know, come on, what's the fuck is going on here? I'm coming to see. No, we have not got out for haircut yet. He did have a bath. It's, time. it's really time to do something. I don't know what to call his pet set and see. And they say they like to don't give him, he's going to have a cocker cut, you know, at some point in time. All this biting. Now go get, go eat. Go eat. There's breakfast over there. Go get your breakfast. Yeah, he running back over to get some breakfast. <laughs> you always see him running back to his food. Yeah, he over there eating. Eat breakfast. Go over there and eat. Why you come back over here? Go eat. Anyway, I woke up this morning. It's Tuesday, Tuesday October 18th, year 2022. Woke up this morning. I was freezing cold. So I woke up in the middle of the night and went to use the bathroom. And I said, ooh, gosh, when that bathroom was freezing cold. Didn't think much about it. I thought, ooh, it's cold in here. We got back in bed. So I woke up later on this morning. I said, I got up. I said, oh, I turned on the TV and they said it was 37 degrees. I said, I said, shit. I wasn't expecting the temperatures to drop until Tuesday evening. I didn't realize Monday night going into Tuesday morning, the temperatures were going to get this cold. I had to turn on the heat. So guys, the one thing I've learned about these houses, you got to turn this heat on because houses can get even colder than what's outside. And if you don't turn that heat on, if you don't turn that heat on, um, your house, your pipes could freeze. It literally don't take much for a little draft to get up under one of these cabinets. And they get so cold outside and it's just so... Sometimes trying to save money ain't a good idea. So when I realized, you know, that bathroom was so cold, I turned the heat on in that bathroom. That bathroom has its own furnace unit anyway. So I turned the heat on. Here we go. Here we go. I turned the heat on so that the, um, I couldn't risk all that new plumbing in there. This is what he's trying to get. All that new plumbing I put in that bathroom. One of these bathrooms, it stays, it sits over the garage. So, when I turned that heat on, though, it was nice and warm. I opened up the doors on the cabinets and water and the heat in there. Uh, we can't afford any fro frozen pipes over here. That'd be a disaster. I'm not going to go through all that mess. Um, houses can be expensive. They have their ups and downs. But you show up and make sure that you, you, can, you better turn that heat on. Uh, you're going to have an even worse nightmare. What is that? Now you found another one. Give me that. Give it to me. I put all those squeaky toys up. Yeah, now nah, I, I took that one too. See, I'm not going to have you making all that noise. But I, I think when he hears me start talking in his videos, for some odd reason, he just determined. Now you back over here again. You just determined. As soon as I started talking, just like the last Vandy in Vegas, somebody asked what happened to Vandy in Vegas when they died of old age and dogs were old. Vandy lived damn near 20 years. Vegas was like 18, 19. I don't know if this one's going to last 20 years or not. He too busy frisky running around in the middle of the street chasing after these white folks over here. I think I got a racist dog. You see white folks, he run right after their asses. But anyway, it's a beautiful Tuesday morning, and uh, I, I I will be making a trip soon to Gary, Indiana. My um my father's old my father's oldest sister, my aunt, she passed away, and so I'll be going up to Gary. I don't know, we gonna fly. I think I'm gonna fly. I don't think I can make that drive. No, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that drive to Gary, Indiana. But I made. Just fly. Last time I was in Gary was for another funeral when my cousin passed away. I had another aunt who passed away last year, but we didn't get it because middle with COVID going on, we didn't we didn't go did not go north to the funeral. But this time I think we are going to be 
some of my, me and some of my other family members, possibly my mother and my sister, who knows, will be making traveling northbound to go to my um, aunt's funeral. She was 94 years of age. I didn't know Aunt Sarah was that old. Last time I saw her, she was getting around. But I would have never guessed she was in her 90s. I was 94, I didn't know. So that means on my father's side of the family, I have one uncle left, um, Uncle Ray Dean. Because so I've lost my father passed away, JC passed away. Now Sarah, Auntie, Aunt, Aunt, Auntie Abby passed away. So I have one uncle left, if I'm correct. I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, hey, come here. Bring me a toy. Bring me a toy. We bought him a new bed. So that's his little bed. That's Grayson's little bed now, matches the couch. And this is what he does all day. Grayson, bring me a toy. Come here. Bring me a toy. You wanna come here? No? So he sits up on his bed, making love to his little toy all day. I'm not going to chase you. That's okay. You don't make your noise up, y'all. It's just ignoring you. The only thing I'm about to chase you with this damn toy. I'm not. I got another toy. I bet you come for this one. Yeah, you came for it too, didn't you? Give me this one. Now I got both of them. You should have kept that other toy you had. You had one of them. You should have kept it. Look, look, look. Get out! Anyway, I might be going to Gary, Indiana for a little road trip. Um, for the, uh, I haven't been to Gary in, in years and years to come. I just hope that on uh, the weather. And my aunt just called me today. She said it was snowing up there in Michigan. They got a little bit of snow on the ground. It's freezing cold outside. So who knows? Time to get a little warm in here. I'm trying to heat down. So, what is this? Whew. It is a um, It is going to be a cold day here. Let's see. How do I turn this heat down? I think I got it too high. Oof. Yeah, it's too, too damn high. Turn this shit down. Anyway. So, now you found another toy. He found another toy. He found another one. Give it to me. We found another one. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. I don't know. I'm in Gary. I hope to spend some time in Chicago because I haven't been over to Chicago in over. I've been to Chicago in over 20 years. The last time I've been to Chicago was in 1997, 1998. Me and Earl went up there, took a road trip to Chicago and Detroit. And uh, we drove to Chicago and we drive, drove up to Detroit. I don't know what we were doing there, but we spent some time in Chicago. We had a nice time there, it was beautiful. But that was some time ago, Chicago has changed. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get into Chicago and visit while I'm there. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get into Chicago. And see what I could do. But anyway, this is gonna be a short video. Just letting you all know I'm coming up to Gary because I got some uh, a, a funeral to go to. So I'll be up in the Indiana area. I've been up. I have not been that direction in years. And if you, I think it was about three or four years ago when I was last in Gary when my um, cousin passed away. So it's been a minute since I've been there. You know, as you get old, you begin to, you, as you start to lose family members, I mean, it's inevitable, nobody lives forever. 
but it's just um, it makes you view life um, differently. But anyway, before I go, I had a conversation with my aunt, and she was discussing about how black people leave certain neighborhoods, and she feel that blacks should stay in certain and wealthy blacks should remain in these neighborhoods that are black neighborhoods. On paper, that sounds great. But y'all, I have some friends of mine that live here in Atlanta, friends and associates who purchase, I would say, fairly expensive homes in some predominantly black neighborhoods. And they have suffered a lot of, one got shot in his garage, somebody was trying to carjack his car, I guess crime could happen anywhere. Another friend of mine, he has a beautiful home. He had to put burglar bars all over the house because people kept b breaking into the house or trying one. And even one instance with him and his son inside the house, somebody was trying to break into his house. And I'm thinking, you know, they he had the alarm we could set. He has this, these sensors outside and he could, in cameras, he could see the people literally tried to break into his home when he was in there. Um, so now he has burglar bars over that beautiful home. I mean, the house is just, it's going to be in a magazine. But living in certain black neighborhoods, unfortunately, if you have a nice home or the perception that you might have a little bit more than somebody else, all my friends and associates who lived in these areas on the south side of town, Cascade and various other places, they've had incidents that have happened at their homes with their cars or burglaries or stuff stolen or they were carjacked or harmed. People shouldn't have to live. We just because just because we're black, we don't have to live our lives like that anymore. We don't have to be stuck in neighborhoods where crime might be. You, you put your life at risk. In some instances, it's okay to pack your stuff and go someplace safe or what you might perceive as safe. And if I'd had my choice, I would have been about an hour outside of Atlanta. Uh, there was a house I looked at that was on the lake. It was an hour outside of Atlanta. And it sat on multiple acres and it sat by itself and had a lake, a lake, it had its own dock. It came with a brand new boat and jet skis. Nobody for miles. That's what I would have preferred. So I don't have to deal with this element out here. The bridge, as you is as with any urban city, and we all know this to be true now, crime has gotten off the chain. Let's just keep it real though. In black neighborhoods, it didn't get even where it was already bad, it didn't went from bad to worse. So if you're gonna stay in these black neighborhoods, like my aunt saying, stay in there and support the neighborhood and all this other stuff, I'm like, yeah, right. She out in the country herself. If you're gonna stay in these black neighborhoods and you you're gonna need a gun. Burglar bars, an alarm, you're going to need cameras on your home, some type of neighborhood security to watch it. I mean, seriously. Because crime could happen anywhere, but it seems to happen a lot more in these black neighborhoods than what we are willing to admit. I mean, so now that I have my friends, they all literally one couple, they were living, they had built this beautiful house in East Point. They had so many problems in East Point. They sold that house. Now they're out in Ellenwood. They sold the house for a lot of money. And they went further out because they needed to be, they were tired of these incidents. Just crazy stuff to happen in their neighborhood. So, but again, crime could happen anywhere. We all know this. But it is a highly likely, very likely that it will happen down in Niggerville. In these, in these neighborhoods, in these areas I'm talking about, y'all, these were beautiful, developed, clean, nice neighborhoods, new construction, a Publix down the street, new homes or new or newer homes, nice man, uh, houses with manicured yards and well-maintained yards and stuff. But what they have to going to have to do in these black neighborhoods, and this is why I won't do a black neighborhood, or I won't do on the south side of town. The neighbors need to get together and do some type of and pay for private security. They don't want to do that. They don't want to pay for private security. The neighborhood I live in now, we have private security at Rose these streets. They're out there. And you pay for it. And they're out there. It's safe. 
black neighborhoods, they don't, I don't know if they can't afford it. I don't know the answer to that, but I've never, and I could be wrong because it might be, we might have reached the point down that some black neighborhoods down in Cascade and South Fulton may have private security guards out there riding in the streets. They need to. Y'all living in half a million to a million dollar homes, y'all can't come together and pay for a private security guard just to ride through the streets at certain hours to keep an eye on you all's houses. That would make the neighborhood safer because then the private security guard can see the element the element them heathens coming onto the property and what they're about to do. So that's my only big major complaint about living in certain areas on the south side of town or in these black neighborhoods. We don't take crime that serious that we're willing to pay for security, private security, or install cameras all over the neighborhoods so we can keep an eye on the elements as they come in. And it's just my thoughts and opinion. In certain other areas, you know, you're, there are certain subdivisions here in Atlanta, Georgia, you can't even get through the gate. I don't know if y'all remember, was T.I. was arrested trying to get into a subdivision, his own subdivision, lock his ass up. And so, and he lived there. He was drunk and acting a damn fool. However, until black people tackle the crime issue, are willing to tackle it, and I'm not talking about just relying on police, because, you know, they ain't, they don't, it ain't enough of them any damn way. Until blacks are willing to tackle the crime within their own neighborhoods. I don't know if you all have noticed now, Quick Trip has hired private security guards now at all their locations. They now have that work for Quick Trip. They, the, the private security guards actually work for Quick, Quick Trip and they have guns and they will shoot to kill. Makes sense because Quick Trip has had a whole lot of problems at their, some of their locations. You know, and it's Quick Trips have a lot of high traffic, a lot of volume, a lot of people. We got to a point that I stopped going to Quick Trip. I prefer to go to get Kroger gas. I can get my discount at Kroger gas. And Kroger gas stations don't seem to have the volume that Quick Trip trip. It's like whole circus going over on that Quick Trip. Everybody going to get hot dogs and slushies and gas and use the bathroom. There's a thousand people going on. And so those security guards are having to keep out a lot of shit going on on Quick Trip. And there's been multiple people shot and killed at Quick Trips here in Atlanta. Um, just customers minding their own business. And they came across that element, them niggas. Y'all yeah, know what element I'm talking about. But again, until blacks are willing to deal with the, the crime in their neighborhoods, seriously tackle it. Seriously provide their own private security. Seriously go after these heathens who run up in these neighborhoods but kicking in doors and carjackings and stealing cars and stealing mail and packages off porches and breaking into houses. Until you, until blacks are willing to tackle those problems head on, I'm staying out of the neighborhoods. I'm not going to pay seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars for a house, and I'm going to live in there in fear that at some even given point I got to put burglar bars. I, this house I live in, I don't have burglar bars. In. There's no need to. But there were houses I looked at, I thought, okay, this is a beautiful house, but I'm about to do something to protect this house. And that just dawned on me, I don't want to live in that element. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to live around the heathens. I don't want to live in the neighborhoods, but I have to be scared if that if my car is, is going to be still in the driveway. Oh, yeah, speaking of such, one of my friend's car got stole last night. Yep, got stole last night. He called me last night late, but he stole my car. I said, he stole your car, huh? Yep, stole the heat. And actually, he lives in a high-rise in Buckhead. And somebody went under the, uh, into the garage and they, they stole his car. Very strange. But uh, not strange. People steal cars every single day. So, but now he, uh, he just got that car, too. It was about a, about a year ago. Fairly new car. I'm trying to figure out how they stole it. But you never know, if the people want something, they're going to get it. They're going to come get that car. And he had all that stuff on that car, so I'm not surprised. They came and got that damn car. And the wheels and, y'all know, that nigga shit that was building. See, I don't do that to my cars. Wherever my car comes from the factory, that's how I'm going to roll with it. And that's it. I might tint the windows. That's it. All the fancy aftermarket wheels and accessories and all that shit. Hell no. A nigga going to come get it and steal that damn shit. That's exactly what happened. And got it this. And I hope he had that insurance paid up. I pray in OPD and I'm going to call him in three minutes. But anyway, I just want to do a quick video. 
Today is Tuesday. It is October the 18th. The year is 2022. I'm out of here, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Don't forget to turn them furnaces on if it's cold. I know it's cold in most of the USA today. So don't be afraid to turn that heat on because if you don't turn that heat on in these houses, our apartments are condos. Them pipes could freeze if cold weather gets cold air gets into them pipes and under those cabinets. Houses tend to be like, this house was freezing cold. And when I woke up in the middle of light last night, I realized that bathroom was so cold. I said, it didn't dawn on me that the temperature had dropped that low into the 30s. So so I, I, when I woke up this morning, turned on the news, I said, it was shit. No wonder it was so damn cold in that bathroom. It was like 31 degrees, 31, 32, something, so 30, 30 something. But now I think the temperature has warmed up. It is now... The temperature is, where are we, the weather. It's 44 degrees now, so it's starting to warm up a little bit. So it's 44 degrees now. Um, I was going to get the high to today of 54 degrees. I wish I was in Miami. So we're going to get to a high of 54 degrees. I, I got to go to Gary, Indiana. Ooh, Lord, I'm actually, let's see what the temperature is in Gary, Indiana, if I can pull that up. As I know, it's cold in Gary. Let's see what's the temperature in Gary. 38 degrees. 38 degrees today, and it's going to be a high of 45 degrees. Keep an eye on Gary. But anyway, today it is Tuesday, October 18th. The year is 2022. I'm out of here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. I'm about to make me some breakfast. I'm out.